Hey everybody and welcome back to another Star Trek Discovery review on episode 3, Context is for Kings, on Total Random Reviews. Uh, let's start off with the uh, disclaimer warning here that this uh, review is going to be filled with spoilers. So please do not watch this video if you do not want it ruined for you. Now if you've already watched or you don't care about spoilers, please continue. So, let's start off with my initial thoughts on this episode. Um, uh, it's different <laughs> from my last two. Uh, the first two episodes were, for the most part, okay. But uh, I've got to say that uh, episode three was leaps better, I think, than one and two. Uh, more so better than two, though. Uh, this was a very entertaining episode uh, than the previous two. Um... You know, we, 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 we figure out what the purpose is and why things are happening so far. It, it's, it's getting me excited. And uh, I got to remember that Star Trek Deep Space Nine kind of started the same way. People weren't really down with it for the first couple seasons. And then it really blossomed. Um, I'm going to continue to give this series a chance and we'll just see how it goes. But uh, initial thoughts, this episode was actually really good. I, I, I enjoyed it, and I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to episode four. Uh, all right, so let's go over this brief, not-so-brief uh, synopsis. So this episode starts off with Burnham on a shuttle with four other prisoners uh, that is heading to Starbase 18. Uh, I'm assuming it's because they're being transferred there to go to their respective penal colonies. Um, while traveling through this field, uh, an organism that feeds off of electricity is all over the shuttle. The pilot has to remove it manually, so she's in an EV suit and, and heads out. Uh, while working on this problem, apparently the tether detaches, and we see... Uh, the pilot go bye-bye. <laughs> um, they never actually mentioned if they saved her or not, but uh, she went bye-bye. So things are starting to look grim on this shuttle uh, until the USS Discovery comes in and saves the day with tractor beams beaming. It pulls the shuttle out, and the prisoners are brought on board and greeted by a rather bitchy, rude Chief of Security, Commander Landry. After meeting Landry, Landry escorts them to the mess hall because, as she explains it, Starfleet says you have to eat. Um, so they go to the mess hall, and a fight ensues in the mess hall between Burnham and two of the other prisoners. After Burnham wins, Commander Bitchy, I mean Landry, uh, pulls a phaser on her and says the captain would like to see her. After arriving on the bridge, Burnham notices that Saru is sitting in the captain's seat. She takes note of him and then heads to the captain's ready room. Here we meet Captain Gabriel Lorca. He introduces himself to her and she gets straight to the point and uh, starts questioning the captain as to why she is there. Uh, the captain doesn't really give her a straight answer and Rick tries to recruit her to work on a task. She doesn't want to, but the captain doesn't really give her a choice. Burnham gets escorted to quarters after meeting with the captain, where she meets the very plucky cadet Sylvia Tilly. After they greet each other awkwardly, the ship suddenly goes into what is called a black alert, uh, which caused an odd effect all around her, like water that is floating around in an environment without gravity. She questions the cadet, who uh, stays silent and ignores her. The next morning, Burnham bumps into Saru, who is standing creepily outside her quarters. <laughs> Here she learns that Saru is in fact the first officer of the USS Discovery. Saru and Burnham start walking towards somewhere, which we later find out is one of the engine rooms, and she learns that she'll be working on a task in the engine room. Here she meets Lieutenant Stamets, who's a little full of himself. He questions why she's there, and she explains that Captain Lorca sent her, and he gives her a task. This task may, takes many hours. Uh, while she's working on this task, many hours later, she notes that Stamets is speaking with somebody. Uh, Stamets is speaking with a colleague uh, on the USS Glenn about a project they are both working on their respective ships. Perhaps something to do with Black Alert? 
It is also important to note that the USS Glenn is the sister ship to the USS Discovery. Burnham suspects something is off on this ship, and there's a room in the engine room that is off limits. It can only be entered uh, through breath authorization. Um, so, uh, later that day, she gets a sample of her roommate's saliva and uh, gets some weird device and blows it into the breath machine, which actually works and recognizes Cadet Tilly's breath, which opens a door to the engineering lab, where she finds a room filled with plants of some kind, with spores floating all around the air. Later, we learn that the USS Glenn, while conducting black alert maneuvers, lost all hands. They head to the Glenn in a shuttle with Landry, Stamets, Tilly, and Burnham. Board the USS Glenn and come across heaping masses of flesh and blood. What was left of the Glenn's crew. They head to the engine bay to collect the project that they were running. The same project that Lieutenant Stamets is running on the Discovery. They also find the bodies of a number of Klingons. Landry makes note that the Klingons aren't in the same condition as the crew. Stamets explains that it is because the Klingons must have come aboard after the accident, which leads to the next question. What the hell can do that to a dozen fully armed Klingons? It isn't long after that question that we find out. This suddenly appears and chases the away team down. They get to the engine room to get what they came for, all the while the beast is hammering at the door. Burnham makes herself the target when the beast breaks in to help buy some time for the rest of the away team to escape. It works, and she makes it back onto the shuttle, and they fly away. After returning to the Discovery, Burnham heads to Captain Lorca's ready room. Here, he offers her a position on the USS Discovery, regardless of the fact that she was court-martialed for mutiny. She accuses the captain of orchestrating her arrival on Discovery and accuses him of conducting experiments on spore-based bioweapons, which she points out is illegal. The captain requests a site-to-site -site transport to the engineering test room where he reveals that they are not working on a bioweapon, but a new means of propulsion. They are using spores that are cultivated on the ship that can send a ship in and out of a location in a matter of minutes. He wants her to join his crew to help end the war. It seems that Burnham decides to stay and take Lorca up on his offer as the shuttle with the prisoners has left and she's still on board. The Glen gets destroyed by the Discovery so that it does not fall into enemy hands and the episode ends with Lorca in a lab with the beast that was on the Glen, now on a Discovery, behind a force field. So, that was episode 3 of Star Trek Discovery. Context is for kings. Now let's go over some things I noted. Uh, so let's start with the one of the good things. Data cards. Yep, that's right. We saw data cards as you see them in Star Trek the original series. You see Burnham used data cards that are very, very similar to the ones from TOS, and this is awesome. This is a nice visual tie-in to the tech that technically exists already in this universe as seen on TOS. So the fact that they've done this is great. The The cards are, are a little modernized. There's kind of see-through like isolinear chips from TNG. That's fine. But they're, they're similar in shape. They're similar in function. It is a, a, a clear visual tie-in to the original series. So I am all for it. Awesome. Good job, guys. Commander Landry. <laughs> what can I say about her? She's a bit of a bitch. Her attitude is not what you would expect of a Starfleet officer. She's very rude and bitchy to the prisoners that come aboard. Yes, they are prisoners, but they are still people. A Starfleet officer wouldn't forget that. You wouldn't have a Starfleet officer in Trek past acting this way towards others. It's just not how people acted in those universes. So this is kind of annoying. I mean, th she's not acting like a Starfleet officer, but uh, maybe we'll discover why. There was a Tribble on Captain Lorca's desk when we first see him. Uh, that was kind of neat. At one point, Burnham making mention of Amanda, her surrogate mother, a.k.a. Spock's 
stepmother. So that was kind of neat. And then there's the the special room that we see at the end of the episode where Lorca is keeping that beast that tore the Glen crew apart. Um, or tore the Klingons apart. Uh, we still don't know where that, that beast came from. We don't know why Lorca has the beast on the ship, but it's there behind a force field. We also notice a few things in the background, like a Gorn skeleton and some Cardassian vols sitting on the table, uh, which I found a little interesting. Um, I don't know if this guy's crazy or if he's just very into biology, but we'll find out, I guess. And that's pretty much it for the things I noted. I, I don't think there was really many bad things there. I think the only thing was Commander Landry, which, you know what, is great. Um, one bad thing compared to the other two episodes? Yeah, I think we're doing good so far. So uh, that's what I thought of this episode. That's what I picked up from this episode. Tell me what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, how did you like this episode? How do you think it compared to the original two? Um, I personally think this is a better episode than episodes one and two. Um, and yeah, so what, what do you guys think? Uh, I, I think this is heading in a good direction. Uh, but, you know, time will tell. All right, so uh, yeah, uh, that's it. <laughs> Let's rate this thing. Um, I think this episode is it was good. It was definitely good. It was definitely better than the first two. I'm not gonna give it a super high rating because I think they'll do even better, and I don't want to set the bar too low. So I'm gonna give this episode a three point five out of five. It was good. It was better than the first two. But it wasn't like the greatest Trek I've ever seen. So it gets a 3.5 out of 5. Uh, we'll see what the next episode gets. Alright everybody. Uh, thanks so much for watching. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up. If you don't you can give it a thumbs down. If you like my content and want to see more like it. Click on that subscribe button. And don't forget to click on the bell notification button. So that you'll be notified when I upload new stuff. Also please feel free to check out some of my other content. Alright everybody. See you next week. Live long and prosper.